Now this is exactly what I want to see electric car companies do. Play around with the designs and that's exactly what Rivian has done here with the R3 which was sort of a surprise I guess because we, we did anticipate the R2, the smaller SUV to be unveiled today but not the R3 and the more very cool looking R3X. So we're going to have a look at this in Photoshop but first of all really, let's have a look really at this uh, to presentation. Uh, what's going on here with the Rivian? So I guess this is Which going to be a 2026 R3. model year. I think Rivian has completely nailed their identity, which is very hard to do as a, uh, as a brand, as a very young company. But they knew what they wanted for the front fascia. It looks a little goofy, which I kind of like because it suits this car. And look at the proportions of this thing. <laughs> it kind of, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the Mark I Golf. Definitely has some Giugiaro styling in there, specifically when you look at the side view, which we're going to have a look at in, in a minute in Photoshop. Rosie, what do you think of the R3? So you didn't expect that one Pretty more cool thing. Pretty <laughs> So R R3 is, we're so excited about what this sort of delivers beyond what we see in R2. It's, it takes the package of R2, and the platform, it shrinks it, it puts it into our take on what is a crossover. Um, and it's a vehicle that's almost hard to define what it is, but it so beautifully captures our brand, it captures what we represent as a company. Uh, it's dynamically incredible, the shorter wheelbase, the tighter dimensions, uh, really enable it to be something that's, you know. Look at this chamfer that goes here. This is an absolutely beautiful line because it creates some dynamic movement in the in the side view and how it connects clearly to the front of the the headlight graphics right here. I also love the wheelbase and this C pillar clearly inspired by uh, the Golf. You know, maneuverable and drivable, but as tidy as it is on dimensions on the outside, we put so much effort into making sure that the inside feels big and uh, much like we saw on on R2, uh, there's a a lot of work that went into everything that you see in the rear of the vehicle, the, the occupant areas in the front of the vehicle. But this is all enabled by the platform and it's about but leveraging all that same content. So the single motor, the dual motor and a tri-motor, the beautiful battery pack built around. What's really interesting too is that if you go for the R3X, the more off-road version, you're gonna get tri motor setup. I'm not sure how much power is going to be, but that's only available in the R3X and not the normal uh, hatchback, which a is a larger R3. format cell. And I, I assume it's going to be pretty powerful uh, really because excited it's taking about the that. engine from the R2. Um, so up front, we have a front storage trunk, much like what we had in R2. And that storage area of the vehicle, uh, you, you can use to throw all your gear, your bags. I want to spend some time in the back. This is pretty cool too. And we spent so much time as a team thinking the, about working on how do we opening. create a unique the closure experience in the back. And what part, you just saw happen glass part as well. is the rear lift gate came up. Um, just like we saw in R2, the first and the second row seats fold flat. Uh, so it creates a, an opportunity for in-car camping or it creates an opportunity to carry your long gear. Uh, but when we close this, there's a second way to get to the back which we call our flipper glass. And there we go. So it's not just the glass, it's part what of the I love panels about this. underneath the glass as well. Such a, you know, small little thing, but it makes loading and unloading stuff so much easier. Things that don't weigh too much that you just want to throw in the back. Just can actually go to multiple heights. Piece. So if you're carrying something that's longer, that could be a surfboard, it could be stuffed animals, it could be a trombone. Um, <laughs> you can adjust the height here and it's a, it's a user setting to make it really easy to carry those bigger objects or bigger things around. And you look at this, look at the thickness of this light bar that we have in the back and also a beautiful housing for it with this chamfer going as around I said, it. Everything in, as we thought about this vehicle was around making a, a, a smaller car, car feel really big. Now, looking at the interior, a lot of what we saw on the, uh, you know, the R2 carries over here. So the use of materials, the way we think about the sustainability of those materials, how durable they are, uh, and, and really embodying that Rivian feel is, is driven into this. And 
So the interior here, if you look at this interior, I think Rivian is crushing it when it comes to interiors. If you compare this, for example, this is supposed to be the entry level with an interior like this. Compare that to the Model 3 interior, even with the refresh, this just looks so much more confident and it has so much more personality uh, than Which the Tesla the interiors. Right I think they've made a fantastic it, um, job across the entire lineup. Same thing we had with our, our two uh, with the, the interiors. control wheels and the steering wheel. Lots of flexibility in terms of storage. Two glove boxes. Um, <laughs> and of course, we still have a flashlight here. Flashlight, very, very important for Bolivian, I guess. To have that included in every car. Now, it looks good. It looks really good. I think it looks so much better fears. with these proportions, these hatchback proportions, than the larger uh, R1S and the truck. So with that said, let's first of all quickly have a look at some of the uh, the spec for this car. The R13 and the R13X is entry level level electric SUV SUVs. I don't know. You just I guess this plastic cladding makes it an SUV, and it's easier to sell than calling it a hatchback. And they will like most likely be sold as 2027 model years. Shares the platform with the R2 that was also unveiled uh, today. It is five inches shorter, and I think that has a makes a lot of big difference to the overall feel for this car. I think it looks fantastic with the shorter wheelbase. The R3X is the sportier and geared more towards adventure than the regular R3 with three electric motors, wider wheels and tires and higher ground clearance as well compared to the regular one. Range is estimated to be around 300 miles or over 300 miles, which is not bad at all. I hope that's actually the case when it comes out. And if you want to, you can still have this with a single electric motor uh, powering the rear wheels, dual motors. Uh, for all-wheel drive, obviously, and here we have this gorgeous looking interior. I, I, I really like what's going on here because we sort of have a housing for the gauge cluster. We're going to look at that more in detail. And if you're being inside of a Rivian, you're definitely going to recognize what's going on in the interior. So there is no pricing yet, but they do expect it to, uh, the, R, the R3 start between $35,000 dollars to forty thousand dollars and the uh, more rugged one the r3x uh, tops out at about fifty five thousand dollars so with that said guys let's jump in here and have a look at this beauty of a car it feels like they are having a lot of fun in the design department of rivian this is a, a beautiful looking car because as i said it feels very Italian, in, in, you know, Golf Mark 1, Giugiaro design, specifically with this line that goes down here. But now I'm talking about the side view when we're supposed to talk about the front. But if you look at the front, this uh, there's really not a lot to talk about in the front end because they have such a clear identity that this looks like pretty much every other, uh, the R1T and the R1S. If you just zoom in on this detail, it's very hard to tell which car in the lineup this actually is. But I do like the graphics here, even though it doesn't have, it really doesn't have an uh, emotional design to it. It doesn't have a face that, it has an expression to it, of course, uh, this goofy, funky looking front face, but it feels, it, it feels like it's more angled towards product design than automotive design, which is totally fine if that is your core identity for your brand, which it is for Rivian. And then we have this beautiful chamfer down here. I love all these lines and small little chamfers. There is a small chamfer housing the, the key graphics here as well. And we have the chamfer or lines, some small lines up here on the hood. Uh, looking nice. The wheels, I think, you know, if they were on any other car, I would not be a fan of the wheels. But since they are on this car with the very geometric shapes overall, I think it looks very good. And this section right here, I would say this section, if we look at this section, reminds me a lot of Volvo and the C40, the XC40. Uh, design. I'm not sure what it is about this. I think it has to do with the surfacing of this car. It's mixed between Scandinavian with some classic Italian Golf proportions. Here we, again, we have this beautiful, beautiful shoulder line cutting down here. Chamfer creates a nice chamfer going around the key graphics, which is uh, the big greenhouse from a side view. Nice looking side mirrors as well. And we have this line going from the bumper, then cutting into the body as well. And you know what this does? It carves out some of this mass that we have down here to make it feel a little bit more, more nimble. And then we have a very abrupt rear end. And have a look at the chamfer here that we talked about in the video. This is a beautiful, gorgeous looking housing or, or sort of um, framing for the key graphics in the rear end, which is this chamfer here then goes into this beautiful panel, 
where you have the Rivian leather sitting. Absolutely stunning rear end in my opinion. And honestly, when I look at this from this view, this could have been if Volkswagen decided to create, you know, a, a rugged electric Golf, this would potentially be a good representation of what that could look like. It's, I'm still, I can't get enough of this uh, treatment here. I think this also has a little bit of a Volvo Scandinavian feel to it when you look at it. So here is the interior. And as I said, if you compare, the, it's still a very simplistic, very minimalistic interior. But if I were to pick between this interior and the Tesla interior, I would go for this one every single time. And look at how cool this integration is of these scroll wheels. You can see the entire wheels just sitting inside of the steering wheel. I think I've never seen an integration like this. And this is what I'm saying, what, I'm, what I mean when I say that the designers probably have a lot of fun on Rivian designing these cars because they come up with solutions like this. We also have proper looking stocks here with some nice graphics on it, the scroll wheel right here as well. A uh, infotainment screen that feels, uh, I wouldn't call it very nicely integrated because you can see we have this big chamfer here as well, with, which is the key main graphics on the interior. And this just sits right on top of it. So you have a, a deep uh, carved out portion behind uh, this screen and it feels like it's sort of out of place but it's not a huge deal. I do like that we do have, I wouldn't call this a, a proper housing for the gauge cluster but we still have it sitting within uh, this panel. So the designers actually have put some effort into placing the gauge cluster into a proper position and then mold the interior around it in contrast to the integration of the, uh, the infotainment screen. Other than that, a beautiful looking interior. I do love the materials and this is actually an EV that uh, that I look forward to seeing out on the roads because this is going to add a splash of funkiness onto the roads with this design and I also love that they put the tri-motor in the more rugged R3X. 